little older. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? You guys all going to the Red Box Bowl? Of course. All right. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it's, uh, we, we actually just got it off the scans and, um, you know, it, it, it's good news um, in terms of what we might have feared. Uh, his ACL is intact, so that's a good thing. His MCL is, is torn and that's, it's going to take some time. Um, but, you know, I think they're talking three months uh, as opposed to, you know, obviously what an ACL could be. So we were, that's what they had a hunch last night. They, they were feeling good, but the, the scans did confirm that his ACL was intact. That yes, was sir. that was really good news for us. Non surgery. Non surgical, yes. Thank you. Uh, what was your message to the team this morning going to the off season, staying prepared? Uh, just how much better um, I want them to get, how much better I want myself to get and everyone in the building. I I kinda talked to them a lot about, you know, the rookie slump or the second year slump guys have. I've seen it a lot throughout throughout my career, so I mentioned that stuff to them. Um, and I really talked about, you know, a lot. I feel personally when I always try to get better, I do that on my own time. It's it's on vacation, whether you're reading something or uh, when you get time to reflect and the stuff you really work out on your own. And then when you get back together, that's when you practice the stuff and you go. And so I just tried to echo to the guys the importance of what I believe in. You don't just show up four months from now and be like, all right, it's time to get better. Uh, it's already too late. If you if you have that mindset, you're coming, you're showing up to catch up. And I always say you're getting better or worse. And if that's the case, you're getting worse. So I want all of our guys to really focus on this four months, how they're going to get better on their own. And we want to see it when they get back. And um, if guys aren't getting better, um, you know, it's not really a threat, but it's it's, it's, it's reality. Um, if you're not getting better, it's, um, it's not going to be long for you. John, you guys were 6 and 10 last year, 4 wins this year. Yeah. You know, you look at this. The records and it looks like the team is went backward. Right. Is the team better set now than it was a year ago? You think for the future? I believe so. I you know I think um, I think there's there's more competition. There will be this off season once we get healthy, um, and uh, I think we're we're poised uh, to be able to add to that. And uh, I think the more we do of that and continue to add good players, the more. Um, we're able to allow guys to compete. I think we saw that uh, at the at the end of this year. Um, we fell far short of our expectations uh, within our within our team this year, and that's what's most important. Our expectations. Um, we fell short of those, but you know, I've I've always been taught that you look for the positives, and I think there are some positives from this season. We got to see a lot of different people play. We got to see a lot of different uh, players who we might have not and see what they're all about. That's the only way to truly evaluate guys in this league, to see them actually play NFL football games. We got that opportunity. You could see the young guys kind of push some of the, the veteran players. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's another reminder, something we've always known, that competition brings the best out in everyone. And that's the environment we want heading into this offseason. And, and the way you do that, you continually continue to add good quality players and good quality people. I think it says a lot too that you know all ten of our practice squad guys this year um, played on the active roster this year. You know, nine for our team and one for another team, and that's not something that you want to happen as a coach. That usually means that you had some injuries and stuff. But um, those nine guys who played on our team um, got their opportunities because of injuries, and um, I think they got better every week they played and. They, they showed that they can be NFL players, and I, I thought we did a little bit of that last year. Not necessarily with all practice squad got practice squad players, but with a lot of young players. And I thought our guys got better our first year here playing young guys. Um, not always by choice at the beginning, but they get their opportunities eventually. And we got better. And this year it was a whole different group of guys with nine of those being practice squad guys. And that's two years in a row of young guys getting opportunities because of injuries. Um, that showed they can play in this league. And now you got two years of young guys that are going into an offseason to compete with each other. Um, we plan on bringing in some veterans. We plan on drafting a whole new group of young guys. And that's now puts three years together of um, getting better. And I expect that to show with their record. John, before the season, we spoke about expectations. And you didn't say playoffs explicitly, but it seemed like you wanted to be in that thing. Going into year three with you two being together, is playoffs the expectation in, in 2019? Look, we, you know, we came in here and on day one said our expectations are to be a championship team. I think we also said we're not going to put timetables on those things. 
I think what Kyle and I focus on is each and every day um, making ourselves better, um, making our organization better by the things we do. And I, you know, we have a philosophy, you know, that's that's rooted in our experiences that when you do that, good things happen. So we won't put any timetable, but we have high expectations, high standards. It, it is clear to say um, we felt well short of those this year. That was disappointing. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to be better, and we will. I think those are the questions everyone gets at this, these type of times. And just how I look at myself and how I try to get my own expectations is I never want to underachieve, ever. I, I always want to overachieve, um, but never under. And um, you want to do as good as you believe that you, you can do. And you hope to get lucky also on top of that. But, um, you know, I look at this year, and um, I, you know, a lot of we went through some tough things this year. And I look back on it, and um, with the stuff we went through, are you going to have a great record? You have a chance to. Um, but odds are it's, it's going to be tough. Um, we only won four games. I'm not happy with that, despite what's happened. I, I believe um, specifically going through the games and everything, I think we should have won seven. And so I'm, I'm down about that. And um, that's what I'm upset with myself for, and trying to find a way to get those games that – um, you could have won a couple of those close games that you feel as a coach just watching the tape going into the game that you should have done. And that's how I'll look at it every year. Um, and when you, I think when you should make the playoffs, you know that. And um, you get disappointed if you don't. But that is the goal always. That either one of you or both have talked to Jed recently. Just generally, what's the, been the word? I mean, you see coaches getting fired throughout the league today and yesterday. This is stable here. What's the communication been from Jed on top of the situation? It's been the same since it was when I interviewed with him for five hours. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I wanted to come here. It's talking to ownership and um, being very blunt um, and honest about um, where I personally thought the team was at that time, um, hearing Jed's opinions on where he thought, um, having a plan going into it. Um, the stuff that we worked for contractually and things like that, it all had to do with the reality of where we are at and or where we were at. And we knew it would take some time. That doesn't mean that you're saying, it'll, hey, it'll, it's going to take four years. Hey, it's going to take three years. Or don't worry, it'll only take two years. That's not at all what you talk about. You talk about the reality of where you are compared to everyone else. And I think um, Jed, I, and John, we were very on that uh, same page in the interview process. And everything I think we talked about, it's we're still on the same page. It's been pretty evident and clear. Uh, you do have opportunities to do things quicker than you want. I was very excited in our second year that uh, we felt we did find a franchise quarterback, and um, we thought that could accelerate some of the stuff. Unfortunately, went through a bad injury, and um, that made it tougher. Like I said earlier, though, I still think we could have won more. Um, but I think all that's been the same since the beginning, so there's no huge surprise here. There's no... I know we could have won a few more games, um, but I also know that expectations and things like that, it's, um, we've been on the same page since weeks before we got here, um, and nothing's changed since today. Kyle, do you see yourself making any significant changes on your staff? Uh, no, I don't see myself making any specific changes. Um, you know, I, I, I like our staff a lot. I think we got some good coaches. I think uh, there's areas we can all get better in. Um, I have an obligation to this organization that, just like I say with any player, when you guys ask me, hey, is this guy tradable or anything like that, I'll, I'll never say no one's for sure not. I mean, who, if Bill Walsh, I mean, if Bill Belichick became available two weeks from now and said he wants to come here, um, <laughs> and I was told I had to let someone go to bring him in, I mean, it'd probably be a smart decision to do that. So, like, I'm not going to ever say that everyone's just totally safe forever. But what I can say is uh, I think our staff is a very good staff, and I like what our guys are and where they can be, and it's a staff I want to hold on to. Have you gotten any requests, either of you, for interviews for people on your staff from other teams? Um, no, I haven't yet. That usually happens later today, though, because it doesn't happen until Mondays. Kyle, just specifically, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Robert Sala. Will he be your defense coordinator next season? Uh, yes. I, could, like, I mean, I think that's what I just said. I know you're trying to get a stronger quote, but um, it's <laughs> trying to take yeah, it down. Yeah. And, and so, what what did you see from him? What how has he grown? What gives you the sense that you know he's going to be the the guy that can help take this defense from where it is now to a, a championship type of defense? Oh, you know, I'm with him every day, so I know I know how good of a coach he is. I know how he is schematically. I know he, how he is dealing with the players. Um, I know what he can handle. Just um, with his personality and how smart he is, and that's a lot. 
Um, I also know that he took over a 32nd ranked defense and is, I don't know what we finished up today. Um, I haven't seen the final rankings, but you know, you know, I think I think he's improved us a lot. I think we've gotten much. I think we went from one of the worst defenses stopping the run in the history of football to being a pretty sound defense versus the run. Um, I think we played a lot more sound, and we've taken drastic improvements in the two years we've been here. And I think he did go through a lot this year with injuries and stuff. Not as much talked about because not a lot of guys were put on IR, but to play with eight safeties during the year, to change your two inside linebackers throughout the year, I think we had a lot of turnover, um, which is part of football. But uh, we need to get better at not giving up as many points, which will help um, the less we turn it over on offense, um, the more turnovers we can get on defense. But um, you know, Saul's done a good job, and I think he'll only get better. I think one thing I would add to that, excuse me, Nick, um, you know, just watching from afar and having conversations with Kyle, I think one thing we're excited about, um, you know, we, Kyle wanted someone from that style of defense. And so we went and found Robert Sala, who was familiar with that style. That, that's something Kyle had gone against and um, had, you know, uh, he, he had a great deal of respect. But you still have to make that scheme your own. And, and that sometimes takes some time. And I think, what I'm excited about. I think we've uh, grown much closer to finding who we are as a defense, our identity. And I think nothing uh, probably uh, reflects that more than up front. I think we, we towards the end of this year, really saw where the pieces fit. And you know, moving Eric Armstead inside and in nickel to, to a nickel nose, moving Solly into an inside player. I think we just, things kind of fell into place as, to where it all fits, and, and that takes some time, you know. And everyone says we're going to play this defense, but you have to make that your own. And I saw that happening, and, and I'm encouraged by that. And I think once you have that, you can do everything a lot better. You can find players to fit that a lot better, and uh, I'm very encouraged about that, as I know Kyle is. Senior Bowl announced you guys will be one of the staffs. So what are the benefits? What can you take away from the time, really, for both of your staffs? Um, I've coached it twice, so this will be my third time. Not proud of that, but um, it's <laughs> hey, <laughs> well. I always like it's the same thing for the combine to me. It's not as much about the players. I mean, it's not about the athletes and stuff because you can see that on tape pretty well. We see it when we work them out. It's about being around people. Um, it's hard in the interview processes and things to fully get to know someone. Um, it's hard. It's hard to get tricked when you're with someone for seven straight days. Um, so that's my experience. What I've gotten the most out of it. You, you know that group of guys better. You know, and the, I, I think it gives uh, Kyle and his staff, it gives us what you covet. You covet time. And, um, you know, in this game, we're not looking for rocket scientists. We're looking for guys that can play football. We get to see them learn football, apply it to the field. And so you get to see them in that setting. And I think it's invaluable. And um, that's, you know, like Kyle said, it's, it's not something we're proud of being there. But we're going to make the most of it. And I think it's a really good opportunity that we're going to embrace and, and get it for everything that, it, that, that, that we can. You know, when you find out who will be on your roster, I think it came out in their press release that you have the South team. Do uh, you know when the exact rosters come out? And are you able to, with um, the committee, they're able to request specific players? Uh, how does that work? I'm sure that's been done before, but uh, we are the South. I guess Santa Clara is south of Oakland, right? And uh, um, but uh, apparently there was another coin toss, and we won, so that's a that's a good thing. But uh, we got the South, and and um, you know we'll we'll see where the the roster shake out. John, we know there's a lot of talk about how there's a lot of pass rushers in this coming draft. And yeah. That's one of this team's needs. Have you gauged that as well? I think it's strong there. I, th I think that's that's. Um, that's clear. There's there's good pass rushers in this draft. I think that's a strength of this draft that that will be, and uh, everyone's looking for those guys. And so I think uh, we're excited. Everybody's excited for that. We know how aggressive you guys have been trading for Garoppolo, the offer for Khalil, and maybe some other things. Is this a moment you might even be more aggressive, given it's going into your third year? Given you think you have maybe close enough to to be within reach of it? Yeah. Well, Tim, I, I think uh, not because it's going into our third year. I think that's our nature. Uh, when we can improve ourselves as an organization, we won't hesitate to take that opportunity. Um, you mentioned a couple of the, the, uh, the scenarios. One really proved invaluable for our franchise. I think we made ourselves better. Came close on a couple other ones. We won't stop. Um, you know, you can't, can't score if you don't shoot. So we'll keep shooting. And, um, you know, if those opportunities are there. That's one reason we came here and a reason that I – 
I hope we never have to make a decision that's based off of because we're going into this year, the third year. The four. I hope every decision is we're going to be aggressive because this opportunity came across and it do not pass it up. That is what's best for this team. And that's why I hope something does come up like that. And if it does, whether it's someone like Khalil, Jimmy, um, we'll be as aggressive as we can to make that happen. But anytime you're, hey, we got to be aggressive because this is the third year, this is the fourth year, that, that's when you're making decisions for the wrong reasons. And that's what um, can hurt a franchise for more than one year. You, you, Eric Arm said you mentioned him a little bit earlier, falling into place and sort of playing better. You guys obviously picked up his fifth year option. But looking at that dollar amount and just his production and what he's given you guys, full healthy season this year, are you comfortable in saying he's going to be back? Yeah, we're very excited with the way Eric played. Like I, I could talked about, fell into place. Now this is, you know, Kyle. Kyle coaches. He's the head coach of our team. He's also the game planner. And so while we spend a lot of time, this is our opportunity. We we'll each take a couple days off. We'll get back and we'll really start to spend some time looking at our complete plan. And so I don't want to make any absolutes. Yes, he's going to be here. You know all those things. But we are very pleased with the way Eric progressed and excited about his future. Now, all those decisions aren't as simple as how do we feel about Eric? Because if it was, then yes, uh, Eric's done a good job, and you don't want to lose good players. Those their decisions are based off of how do you want to balance and allocate all the money? Because mm -hmm. you can't just do whatever you want. So, what are the options out there? What are the what's our depth chart look like? What's the best way to do it? Um, but if it's as simple as just Eric, then Yes, we, we really are happy with Eric. You mentioned the strides the defense has made this year. It also set the record for fewest takeaways and interceptions. Do you hold that? Or do you hold Salah responsible for that or just chalk it up to bad luck? No, I, I think everyone has responsibility in that. I mean, luck plays a degree of it. I mean, those balls on the ground don't seem to bounce the right way, so some of that would be luck, um, too. I mean, you can do more with scheme. You can be more risky, maybe, and do stuff, which might get you more turnovers and might um, make you extremely unsound and having a, a, a horrible run defense and give up a lot of big plays. So there's a very fine line with all that. Um, you like to get some more players out there who can go for the ball, but I also think we have some who do. And we have gone and tried to get guys like that, like Sherm specifically. Um, so I think everything goes into account there. It's not just one person, but that's something that is very obvious that we have to improve at. Um, it's very tough to win games when you don't get turnovers. Um, but it's almost impossible when you don't get turnovers and the offense turns it over. So that's something we've got to really improve on. My experience in this league, you know, being around it for a long time, is that things you emphasize get done. I can tell you that I've never been in a building where turnovers are so emphasized. We talk about it on a weekly basis. We have different people come up, give presentations. So I can guarantee you that. And I can also guarantee you we'll look at every possible solution. I'm, I'm doing it up in, in personnel. We're trying to find people who have a history of propensity to take the ball away. And, and we'll continue to do that. But you know, I really think as we continue to put these pieces together, um, it will happen. We started to see it happen in, uh, against Chicago. You started to see the ball. Some of them didn't break our way. but. You know, I think our guys got the point that, you know, once you get it going, it's like an avalanche. Now they start just falling to you. But at first, you got to take it away. And uh, we started to see that progress. And uh, we wish it, it could have happened more, obviously, not something we're proud of. But uh, we need to improve there. I do think we emphasize turnover so much that I noticed, and I'm sure you guys did too. I think at the beginning of the year, a lot of our guys went for too many turnovers. And we weren't as good at tackling. Yeah. Um, you gotta, once you see that, all right, let's go back to step one. Let's make sure we tackle, and we'll worry about turnovers later. And I thought we, thought we, I think we do have good tacklers on our team. I don't think we played that way early on. And just as coaches, you see we're going for the ball way too much. Like we we got to tackle better, and we'll worry about that secondary. Uh, I think we did get better at tackling. I think we finished um, that pretty well um, when we were going through that. Um, and once that does happen, guys aren't going for the ball as much. But you can do both. Um, but it's not easy. All right? you, you got to get better at it. You got to get more experience at it. Um, there's a lot of savvy veterans in this league who know how to poke the ball out, um, but also make the tackle too. And I think um, I think a lot of our guys, what they went through this year, hopefully have learned both ways, and that'll make them better next year. You mentioned the uh, the injuries a little earlier. There were a lot last year as well. Is that just randomness, or do you? take a, a step back and, and evaluate that and see if there's anything, any line. Well, it's, it's been too big of a deal for two years. Um, injuries are pretty random, but it's also, it's, I mean, it's affected us huge. So that's something that we definitely have to sit back and really look at it and from all angles and put a lot of time into and um, just try to find a better perspective at it. 
Uh, there's an old, old adage in, in football, and I, I don't know if it's exclusive to football, but your best ability is av availability. And we haven't had a lot of guys available. And that's, that's something we we're looking into hard. It's been ongoing. We'll continue to do that. Um, because it's something that needs to change, and I don't think anyone's to blame. Um, but we're, we're, we, we have been studying it. We'll continue to and um, try, to, try to get a handle on that. John, have you talked to any of the, uh, the veteran guys, you know, guys who have, you know, toward the end of their career about uh, where they stand as far as the future goes, and specifically Pierre and Earl Mitchell? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's one thing Kyle and I pride ourselves on is having constant communication with these guys. So we have communicated. I'm not going to, you know, get into specifics what we've talked about with certain players. Don't, don't want to have that play out. But, uh, you know, you guys will learn. We have had good lines of communication. We have some decisions to make on some of the guys like those, and, and, and we'll make those at the appropriate time. Kyle, you said you think you could have had or should have had seven wins this season. Um, you allow yourself to think if you had your starting quarterback the whole season? How many wins did you have? I don't know, and I probably messed up by telling you guys seven. <laughs> <laughs> I was just being too honest I've there. I've never heard a coach say that. Before. Well, I mean, it's, it's, I just try to look at it that way. I'm like, um, and I, I think there was, I mean, we were close in a lot of games, but there was three in particular that have really um, bothered me. I think we should have finished them in one. I don't, um, I think things might have been easier if we had our quarterback, um, but that doesn't, I still don't look at it. I looked at it going into this year as, all right, hey, we're, I didn't look at it as we're going to this year. Hey, we're a ten-win team. I looked at it this year as, man, I think we got a team that I don't see anyone on paper that we don't have a chance to beat, and I felt very good about that. Um, it makes it harder the more guys you lose, um, and that's really all that changes. How many did you think you should have won last year? <laughs> I'm gonna get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that was too long ago, so I can't remember. Did you say the three games that you thought you should have won? Um, yeah, I thought we should have. I thought we should beat Green Bay. I thought we should have beat Arizona on the road. Um, we should have beat him at home too, but that goes to turnovers. Um, but on the road, it was versus Arizona was the biggest disappointment. Green Bay and then the Giants. When you guys got here, obviously you signed some veteran guys like Garcon, who could play, but also brought that kind of veteran leadership. How important has it been to see some of the younger guys kind of step into not just playing well, but leadership roles? Guys like Kittle and, and Buckner. It's extremely important. You know, when we got here, you know, it wasn't as much on defense, but I mean, offensively. I think we changed every single player on the offense in our first year. I want to say Staley was the only returning starter out of all 11 guys um, our first year. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't go spend a ton of draft picks on, on guys. So you have to do that. You have to bring in some people to plug in and do that. And I thought guys did that, allowed us to get through that and kind of set a standard for certain guys. And when you do that, you got to have some young guys come up. And um, guys like Kittle, even what Breida did this year, um, you know, our whole line, you know, just, what guys brought in like Lincoln McGlinchey was, even though he's a rookie, I mean, I consider him one of the leaders of our team. Um, you know, I think a lot of these guys have stepped up and made a role. What Fred Warner did for us this year, I'm for him to play in all these games, um, to battle through that as a rookie, um, that is pretty unheard of. I mean, the pressure at Mike Linebacker just to be the leader of the defense and the voice of the defense and um, to play with the physicality that that position takes all year as a rookie and to still show up every Sunday. And that's extremely impressive. And if you don't have that stuff, um, it's it's tough to go in the right direction, you know, because we, we had to turn over a lot of people. And so in order to do that, you have to have stories like that. And uh, we got to have more next year coming too. And I would just add there that, you know, I, I think leadership, um, you know, the, the definition I've kind of grown to appreciate about that you make people around you better and and you know that can be Joe Staley and Richard Sherman like they did all year I think we saw it as a team we had some young guys come in and play particularly on defense that made those guys around them better they started playing with an energy a tempo George Kittle won the Bill Walsh award today for embodying what a 49er should be about but George Kittle started that the day he left here last year he he was on a mission and so um, you know it can come in all shapes and sizes and can come at all ages. And, and uh, I think that's something that can't be lost on these guys. Everybody can lead in their own way. And you get really good when you have a team full of leaders. Just mentioned that during the game after each drive, they were checking in and figuring out how many yards away Kittle was. It felt like everyone was real juiced up to see him get that. Is that just kind of indicative of, of the respect he commands I and mean, being a captain in year two um, you know, just in the locker room? Yeah, I thought it was a really cool feeling just because, I mean, 
the, the game the game was rough and there wasn't much positive with it and especially the way we started out you know offense turning the ball over four times um, when that team is playing for a lot um, when they have that good of an offense anyways for us to spot them 21 points like that um, I thought it would I mean, that's, that's doing Shea almost and then to watch our defense there in the second half a bunch of guys are going out a bunch of guys are really banged up and they're having to just play through it and they're just trying to run it down their throat just to end the game when they have such a big lead and I'm just watching our guys um, there's not much left and to sit there and call a couple guys over in a timeout and be like hey guys if um, if you guys can stop them because they, they think we're just going to run it down anyways but and they're, they're not aware at the time but it's hey guys if you can stop them here we will throw the ball we need to get Kittle nine more yards and we'll get it for him if you guys can stop them and to, to say that to the guys and to watch everyone and to watch Exum just blitz on his own and just to do whatever they could because they once you, we said that to them, you could see it in their eyes and then everyone on the bench was yelling for it and I mean, stopping them on that fourth down it was a big moment because you know, the game was it was a bad feeling and um, it wasn't there wasn't much to be happy with but then when the guys saw that to see that energy turn up and to watch him fight to give Kittle that opportunity it was it was such a good feeling to give Kittle what he deserved um, but he couldn't have done it without the defense too and uh, everyone really enjoyed that and felt good about it. Coolest thing about Kittle, too, I would add, I, I just I think the exciting thing for all of us, there's more in there, I think, um, in terms of uh, his will. But, I mean, he, there's things he can develop in his game that can make, make him even a, a stronger player. And uh, that has George excited. It has us very excited. But the, the, I think the biggest lesson for our team, you watch the guy. That guy outworks people uh, by the way he comes. That And it starts not only out on the field, the way he prepares his body, and he's learned that in short order, and that, that, that makes you really proud. Just curious, how, how exactly do you know that there were nine yards? Is there somebody upstairs that's tracking Kelsey's game? How does yeah, that get relayed down to the you? media guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> contact with him during the game? No, he's, no, that would be illegal. He's, I don't know, they tell someone, they get it to people, and then someone tells me, and it usually irritates me at first. I'm like, that's not what we're worried about right now. Kittle's um, mom had a... <laughs> but I didn't want her to get pissed at me again. So. Last year, you guys pretty clearly were not interested in hard knocks coming in. Once again, you were among the handful of teams that cannot turn down a request by the NFL. What's your stance on hard knocks coming in this summer if they ask? You had to go there, huh? <laughs> it's, it's a hard, hard, bad stance. <laughs> you will see the worst entertainment possible by me. <laughs> leadership in the locker room you both were familiar with Richard Sherman did he even prove himself to be more valuable when he came in here yeah I, I, you know I had a good visit as did Kyle today with Sherman I, I just got a lot of respect for the way he handled himself first and foremost he's working through a very tough uh, getting his body right and uh, the way he battled through that we knew early on it wasn't perfect uh, the thing that has me excited, I think he hit a point come, it was just about by week he came out of that, and I think you could see it. He, he felt better. He was in a little better mood because pain's not a comfortable thing, and I think the pain kind of just went away. And um, I, I, I think it showed and reflected in his, in his play, but we couldn't have been more happy with the way he was in terms of uh, using his experience, his championship pedigree to to bring up and, and bring up those around him, not only in his room, but throughout the team. Uh, you can see what has made him a special player over the years. You think you know, but you never truly know until you're around someone. And, and uh, we got to see it firsthand. John, what about On the Wonders? other side, would you feel comfortable next season going into training camp with Richard Sherman on one side and Tarvarius Moore and Akello battling, competing for the other starting job? Or do you need to add more there? Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're in a league right now that throws the ball a whole lot, so you can't be strong enough at that position. And, uh, you know, all those players you mentioned, we're ex extremely excited about Tarvarius. He got an opportunity to go play, and I think he showed some really good things. But I think that's going to be great competition between he and Akello. And we'll see. Like I said, we're still in the, in the uh, early stages. But, um, you know, we've been, we've been studying the free agents available. We've obviously been studying the draft. And, um, you know, that's a spot I think you just keep adding that. And uh, you have to be strong there. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Thank you.